water is like. Water is about 70% of the average human body weight. About 90% of a cell is made of water. An incredible resource given man and other life forms by nature. 16 countries in Africa do not have water bodies. Ghana has it in abundance. Sadly, an appreciable number of these water bodies in Ghana have been victimized. These water bodies have become prey to what operatives in the sector describe as alluvial gold mining. These sources of water have been rendered almost useless and dangerous to any life form. Today, some of the rivers which flourish with fishing have become veritable factory yards with a nameless locally made dredging boat. Manufacturers and users alike call it tutu 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 tutu. That's the sound it makes when it's set on water. This is the vessel used by the alluvial gold miners on the river bodies. Bob Marley's words, in abundance of water, the fool is thirsty, will not be far-fetched from Ghanaians as the rivers die slowly at the hands of these miners. Life or wealth, trading Ghana's water for gold, exposes the scary realities of alluvial gold mining in Ghana and discusses the thoughts and beliefs of the active players. Our journey of Inquisition started in the Ashanti region, Swami Magazine inside Kumase, home to Ghana's finest artisans and mechanics. Sales and manufacturing of vehicle spare parts are the most common activities here. With their skills, anything at all can be assembled, even guns. The debate as to how to nurture these skills to generate a national manufacturing hub has yet to be given any serious reflection. Individual artisans manufacture different parts of the water destroyer. The shaft which does the work underwater is manufactured right here under high heat from the melting metals in this furnace. He is popularly known as Al Haji. He tells us how the machine works. <laughs> We learned that business is on the low side because security agencies have been on the heels of their major customers, the Galancy operators. The modus operandi is that different people manufacture various parts of the dredging machine. They are then sold to others who assemble and sell to Galamseyas. Our search for sellers and buyers was tough. The trade is shrouded in secrecy. A boat costs between 8,000 Ghana cities to 10,000 Ghana cities. The tututu is assembled using wood, metals, water holes, empty tanks, and a Chinese made engine, Chanfa, which powers the vessel to move and pump the gravels up from under the river, bringing up the gold. The destruction of the river bodies with alluvial gold begins when a tutututu is put on the river as a complete floating vessel. A water hose interconnecting a long pole and a chamfang is held by young energetic men who shake it as it pumps the gravels up onto the carpet. The gravels along with chemicals such as mercury, cyanide and lead used to wash the gold are washed back into the river producing too much silt for the easy flow and polluting of the water. If water is indeed life, these illegal alluvial gold miners are choosing gold over life. Sources of drinking water to many are being polluted by chemicals and mud. 
the River of Fin and Brim flow into the Pra River. The extent of destruction caused to these water bodies by the Galamsey activities is mind-boggling and seem everlasting. At Trifupraso, deep in the belly of the forest, we found footprints of an excavator. We followed about one mile and far away from human activity, they were busily dredging sand and gravels from the River Pra. At Apianguanta, in the western region, we counted 200 of the Tutututu on the Pra River. Along with it comes serious noise pollution. The operators here do not agree that they are causing any harm to the water, with a blunt disregard for the hundreds of people who depend on this water to live. <laughs> And vigilant of it. Le wa sun la e make sure be eh made da kama ga imo e ta no fe bi e wo do go black am am leke so la me ga kwe tro to me ho the reality is these polluted rivers can no longer support fish and other aquatic lives. For the three days we spent on the waters of Trifopraso only one daring fisherman was on the river eh be ten sinin en ko yi en ko bi mu pa an se na sai the mercury used in these rivers accumulates in the fish, and this, when consumed, causes mercury poisoning in humans. This can result in nervous system disorders, breath defects, or even death. Dr. Mark Agblobiche is medical superintendent at the Achimota Hospital. He has been a mind doctor for 10 years. Mercury is, um, is it does not, uh, it cannot be converted. So you get the raw mercury entering into your body. And so is the fish is also who even can drink the mercury in the droplets in the water. So it gets into the body, you eat the fish, uh, and then you, or any other animal from the, this in the water bodies, crabs and things and you also absorb even the what do you call it the mercury raw now this mercury uh, enters into your bloodstream and damages your kidney doctors say lead in water can increase blood pressure in adults and cross the placenta this results in miscarriages stillbirths and neurological damage this will adversely affect the attainment of the UN development goal 4 on reducing child mortality rates and when you eat them over a period of time, you get uh, chronic cyanide toxicity, which comes in the form of uh, general weakness of your body. Uh, person will be feeling very weak. Person will be feeling tired very quickly. Uh, it causes drowsiness, dizziness. When the person is walking, he will not be stable. And then even it causes uh, miscarriages in pregnant women. United Nations concept of sustainable development prescribes that mineral raw material needs of society are met without compromising the ability either of future societies to meet their needs or of natural environmental services such as climate systems, biological diversity and ecological integrity. Ghana is going contrary to this requirement as her river bodies come under heavy attack of pollution by illegal miners. Once you are grinding the sand, it means you are adding other nutrients which you may not know what are inside into the water body. These can be in form of different chemicals because you, the thing may be a rock and now you've ground it. So you've mixed it with water, it becomes soluble. If it were to be a rock, it will not mix with the water. Now you have ground it, so it mixes with the water. And once it's in solution, anybody who takes that water will be affected by it. 
The Pra River and its tributaries flow through about 40 districts in four regions that is Ishanti, Eastern, Central and the Western regions. Over 1,660 towns are situated along the banks. All of these towns have their drinking water from Pra and its tributaries. The lives of the inhabitants of these towns are in danger as the basin is completely destroyed by Galamseas. In the eastern region where the Brim River flows, only the source is as clean. Downstream has been diverted and heavily polluted. The pollution has greatly affected water supply in the Kibi areas as the Ghana Water Company struggles to treat the polluted water at a high cost. The treatment plant suffers a possible shutdown. Two or uh, nine, we shut down this plant because we were not able to pump our filters, all our filters chewed. So we stopped production for one year. And then when it started going down small, we rehabilitated the distance, the filter, and then started some uh, production. After changing the uh, filter medias, it has to take about six or ten years before we have to change, but less than one year, the filter is almost getting out of hand. Residents in Kibi bitterly complain about the pollution which has taken their pride away. They once boasted of drinking water straight from brim. Now they depend on sachet water. I for only two years. Good for. They are made brim on our side. They are not sure no. Now, at first, now they are afraid to drink water from brim. They say they are afraid to drink water from pure water. Fetch a bottle of water in Kibi and let it settle for a while, and this is what happens. Dirt-filled water, described by residents as good for nothing. You fetch it, it is muddy, very, very muddy, with a lot of sand, brownish, and it stains all the water closet. It couldn't flow through the pipelines, and the lines are normally blocked. Some action has been taken by concerned citizens, yet no response. In some few months, the whole of Sekendi Itakrade may be cut of water supply as the Dabwase treatment plant have become too silted to take in water for treatment. Alluvial gold searchers cannot be bothered about other water users because they are resourced to buy sachet water every day. The river Pra here is rendered muddy, dirt filled and unsafe for basic domestic use. Water treatment has become expensive. The cost borne by the Ghana Water Company Limited is subsequently shifted to the customer. Experts say River Pra is on its way to absolute scarcity. This means it is becoming increasingly difficult to even get treatable water. If we have about a colony of about 20 of these Galamse crafts on this river, what is happening is after scooping, they will deposit the tailings into the river, which is going to impede or restrict the flow of the river. Now, if the flow is not is, uh, restricted, then the amount of water that we are going to abstract from here will also suffer. And that will translate into the amount of water that we are going to uh, produce per day, you understand? So it definitely to affect production. Effects of pollution of these water bodies are already being felt nationwide. Undoubtedly, the cost of water treatment has a huge impact on the airport adjustment in consumer tariffs. When you go to a place like Basu, sometimes when you produce about 10,000 liters of water, it costs us about 39 cities. But you go to Barakasi, which is the, just the same region, the water or river or fin is comparatively cleaner, purer. There it costs us about 24, so you see the difference. The choice is for Ghanaians to make gold or water. We found a dicey balance. Good, no, so no. A bar, a macrum, yes. Me then can be good. No, I think say me pay good. Good, yeah. My person plan be here to say the other person. Water is life. It's human, kwa. Because ocean say ni ya kupon bo ni paya. It's your kuta seventy percent of the body. It's your insu hiya siska. It's your mo amu nufisa. 
Is your winner? Oh, my Gaza, oh, Mupu, my Gaza, the Momania, a year in your age. There are many commissions in Ghana mandated to regulate the industry. The Ghana Water Resource Commission deny issuing permits for mining on water bodies or even within 300 feet mark away from river sources. In most areas, river courses have been diverted. This has created shortages in water quantity to the detriment of other users. It is a legal requirement that any mining company, legal of course, legally registered and to proper operations need to take a permit from the commission to use any water resource or for the purposes of maybe diverting a water course to mine okay or to do any works on the water body it could be damming for instance right so we, yes, we give permits, but they are for specific water use purposes, which will relate to the mining activity. From Apianguanta, Chechore, Diaso, through to Baudie, Dungkwonofin, Beposo, Kibia Pepem to Shifu Praso, illegal miners sing the same song. They blame government for not providing jobs, thus their search for livelihoods on the river bodies. On the other side of the debate, the youth in Ghana are constantly encouraged to be entrepreneurs and nurture others. These young ones believe they have done just that. The contribution of the activities to Ghana's economy cannot be overlooked. Galamseyas come head on with security agencies all the time. They are seriously injured. Hundreds continue to die doing this job, yet they do not give up because through this, they make ends meet and provide for their families. Yeah, when we started school, uh, 2006, uh, Perhaps the debate must go beyond tracking them down. That the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, working together with the National Security Tax Force on Lands and Natural Resources, will complement the efforts of district assemblies in bringing to an end mining in water bodies. At Apianquanta, owners of 200 water destroyers we found on the river told us they pay landowners 100 Ghana cities each week. We one bottle, a week we have one million, one million. A week we have one million, one million. Legal miners cannot afford to be wayward in their activities. The chamber says they ensured over the years that the activities neither affect the river bodies nor go contrary to the mining laws of Ghana. I remember companies, uh, companies who mine responsibly and the Minas Commission that is government you know superintends over mining operations naturally will not give licenses to people to, to mine on the on river bodies. It isn't it is not permitted to mine on river bodies and therefore you find any any operative working on a river body naturally that person will not be a member of the Ghana Chamber of Mines because I remember companies work responsibly. The Minerals Commission, who issues licenses to legal miners, are obviously overwhelmed with the activities of river miners. The Minerals Commission doesn't permit, even, you no, know, I'm talking about the buffer, how much more giving license to mine on probably the water body itself. Mm -hmm. So we put a buffer, 300 feet or 100 meters, between water body and any mining activity. So that's what the Mineral Commission does. 
What would have been financial empowerment for women is floored by illegality. At Chibi Apepem, right beneath the source of the Brim River, these women and children try to make ends meet by engaging in galamse trade. The women foresee social vices, including prostitution, if this job is taken away from them. <laughs> In mining communities, many children of school-going age are enticed by the monetary gains of Galamse early in life. They have no motivation to be formally educated, not when there is money to be made in their backyard. School dropout rates keep soaring in these areas. Yes, I say, I will phone in the no. and I'm going to learn in a swarm, a cogu colicoli equian. A day, yes, I'm dead. Medivitalian and Miss Wichinkosia. In these communities, foreigners, especially the Chinese, are the concession owners who go all out to protect their territories. They pick up guns against citizens and deny them ownership of their own lands. Some of them have been arrested and repatriated, but will they ever be completely non-existent? Sadly, Ghanaians themselves support these foreigners against their motherland. Even policemen, some scrupulous security officers, have condoned with these illegal miners and are protecting them for them to work. That is why it has become difficult. Politicians are involved. Unscrupulous security officers are also involved. And some unscrupulous, let me use the word unscrupulous, chiefs are also involved. In the 2013 budget, Ghana's finance minister stated a worrying reduction trend in cocoa production. It is neither due to pests nor diseases. Ghana has been known for a very long time to be the leading producers, producer of cocoa. Yeah. Areas that did the mine for gold, and particularly illegal small scale miners, destroyed the farmlands that are grown supporting the production of gold. Now, these are illegal activities in the first place where government tries absolutely nothing. They have destroyed all the cocoa farms through illegal mining. That is why we could not get the target. But they are not telling us the truth. They are rather saying that um, they smuggle, some of them have smuggled cocoa to neighboring countries. It is not true. They are cynic. Mercury and sulfur contamination of water bodies, the soil, and even air is scary and alarming. The Water Research Institute of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research evaluated concentrations of trace metals in drinking water sources in some of the heavily polluted communities. Their work revealed that 33% of boreholes and 58% of river waters in these mining communities exceeded the World Health Organization guidelines. We thought things were bad, but when we went to the field, we realized that it was, it was worse, than, worse than we thought. Not only is drinking water affected, farmlands, crops, and other living creatures as these lands and the entire environment are exposed to dangerous chemicals. In 2013, the President of Ghana constituted an interministerial task force to clamp down on illegal miners. Their work contributed to apprehension of many foreign Galanseans, but in the long term, can they make an everlasting impact in the fight against this menace? The interministerial task force has spoken about successes. I did not intend to say that they didn't, they didn't, the interministerial task force did not achieve some more the common success. They did. Or it did. Yes, but we want a sustainable way of dealing with the menace. So you got to have this professory jurisdiction to deal but the, 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 the still working. Will Galamse ever stop? 
That is the big question. In answering the bigger question and as the tussle between Galamse operatives and the state institution ensue, perhaps it's about time the individual Ghanaian stood up for the water bodies. It is also about time the Galamseyers wore their conscience caps. Beyond that, the practice of the alluvial gold mining on river bodies cannot be stopped as institutions mandated to enforce the mining laws are obviously overwhelmed. So if the district assemblies, if the traditional rulers, the civil society organizations, the community-based organizations know of the critical importance of water bodies to the survival of those communities in which they are, why would they allow small-scale mining or mining of water bodies? One credible way is uh, providing alternative livelihood projects in, in mining communities so that those who are willing and want to be obedient to the laws of this country are able to find some alternative you know, jobs to do. It behoves on every, every citizen to make sure we do the right thing. So if anybody sees anyone doing certain activity, the person has the right to report or to question whoever is doing that thing. We all have to make water management our business even in terms of advocacy you know engaging your neighbor or whoever that you find doing something which is not appropriate just a little bit of it and if we do it and make it as a concern as has been coming up of late i guess we'll be getting there in terms of improving the resource all the time they keep on politicizing certain issues my brother what is bad is bad people should not hide behind politics and do something nasty it's important that we do the right thing we must have a national policy which will drive this nation forward The hard question is whether the institutions are working at all. What can each Ghanaian in their small way do to save the situation? It is not enough to be just concerned. The people of Ghana must speak. The people of Ghana must act. No matter how far you may be from these water bodies, the activities of the alluvial gold miners can and will affect you and your family in the long run. It will catch up with you someday. For now, imagine a Ghana without water a destroyed ecosystem and an over-chemicalized soil on which crops cannot grow. We are all at risk. That's why we must act now. This has been a documentary, Life or Wealth, Trading Ghana's Water for Gold, produced and directed by Adam Srim and Gifty Ando Apia.